I'll kick off the basement with the sports car collection. Here, seeing some baseball cards that are in a showcase mounted on a wall in my basement, as well as baseball cards on a shelf in front of that showcase. And I have like hundreds of thousands of cards in my sports car collection. And the vast majority of them, of those cards, are filed away in commons boxes and in binders in a back room, which I'll show you later. Um, but as far as which cards come out of those binders and into the plastic holders and on display out here is a system I use. And I've actually been using the same system since I started like really getting heavy into collecting cards back in the 90s when I was a teenager. And the system I use is predicated upon current Beckett high values of these cards. For those who know, uh, the Beckett uh, monthly magazines price cards raw mint ungraded. I've had a subscription to all four Becketts, baseball, football, hockey, basketball, since, again, I was a teenager in, in the 90s. And once again, also, I realized that Beckett high values on sports cards are a guide value. It's just a guide. I get that. I realize that. I know that, you know, if you're, if Beckett says your card is worth $20, that you get, can't just take that card, run to your Walmart and say, here, I want to cash it in for 20 bucks. I realize it doesn't work that way. It is just a guide. And I use it as such, as just a guide. So, with that said, any card in my sports car collection that has a Beckett value high of $10 or more would get put on display in the showcase or on the shelf out here. And any card with a Beckett high value of $50 gets put into another part of the collection, which we will see. And finally, any card in the sports car collection with a Beckett uh, book value, high book value of $80 or more gets put into another exclusive part of, of the collection, which again, we're, we're gonna see it later on. So that's the system I use for, for displaying cards out here on, on the show floor, as I say, in the cases and on the shelves. And so with that said, we'll go in and take a closer look at these cards. So let's start at the top of the showcase of the baseball with the top row and a half of cards. Apologize for the glare coming off the showcase there. I try to get it off, but I can't. But the top row and a half of cards is Topps baseball cards from the vintage era, the 50s and 60s. It's team cards and subset cards like In Action, Thrills, and World Series cards. Here's one in particular. That one that says Mantle Slams 2 Omers. That's from 1961 Topps World Series subset. There's a New York Yankees team card from 62 Topps. And a few more 62, top, 62 tops in action subset cards there with the wood grain finish. The vintage uh, then continues, excuse me, down here with these cards. And it actually ends right here with another World Series card, Mantle's Clutch Home Run for 65 tops, World Series subset. And these three cards here begin the modern era of baseball cards, 1980s. These three are from eight, 1983, Tony Gwynn. Uh, Wade Boggs, Topps, and Donruss, um, Donruss rookie cards there. And the rest of the showcase is all cards from the 80s and 90s. And if you collected cards back then in the 80s and 90s, and you know it was about the rookie cards back then, and you're seeing some of the big name rookie cards of the 80s there, uh, Mattingly, Clemens, Puckett, Bonds. Here's the once famous 86 Donruss Jose Canseco rookie card. That back in 88 was going for 100 bucks during Canseco's MVP in 40-40 year. And the big name rookie cards of the 90s. Uh, Frank Thomas, Larry Walker, Chipper Jones, Pedro Martinez. There's the Michael Jordan baseball card from 91 Upper Deck. And going through the 90s here, Derek Jeter, Mike Piazza were huge rookie cards uh, back then. And then down here on these bottom couple rows, Alex Rodriguez, another big name rookie card of the 90s, Andrew Jones, uh, Scott Rowland. And come the mid-90s, which we're into down here, it wasn't just about the rookie cards, but it was also now becoming about the parallels and inserts. I'll show you a couple of what I'm talking about here. There are two cards right there, Ken Griffey Jr. insert cards from 94 Leaf and 94 Ultra. And here's three examples of parallels. There's from the 95 Pinnacle Museum Collection, Barry Bonds and Alex Rodriguez. And here's 95 Select Certified Mirror Gold, uh, Mark McGuire Parallel.
And the baseball cards continue here on this shelf in front of the display case. Time frame, we're in the mid to late 90s. Rookie cards are still highly collected and softer. Here's a prime example of one. This is a 95 Tops traded Carlos Beltran rookie card, uncorrected error. That's actually not Beltran featured there. That's a ball player by the name of Juan LeBron. The story goes that Tops uh, mistakenly switched Beltran's photo with LeBron's photo and put Juan LeBron's photo there on Carlos Beltran's rookie card and Beltran's photo on Juan LeBron's rookie card and just never bothered to correct it. But at this time in the hobby, two things are happening, not just with baseball cards, but with sports, well, sports, sorry, sports cards across the board. The first thing is the car companies at the time, Tops, Donruss, Flair, and Upper Deck, are now using inserts and parallels in all their brands across the board. Inserts and parallel cards are now mainstream, and some inserts have serial number on the back. And then the car companies decided to take it up a notch and start featuring certified autographs packed into their cards. Here are some right here from 97 Donruss Signature, Matt Williams, Jose Guillen, Scott Rowland, Jason Kendall, Brian Jordan, Jermaine Dye, there's a Todd Walker autograph, and Bartolo Colon, Lance Berkman. In addition to certified autographs, car companies are also putting game use cards randomly in packs. I have a whole bunch of those, and I'll show them to you later. And the second thing that's going on at this time is the evolution of the sports card itself. You can just by looking at these cards, you can see that these cards don't resemble the cardboard grainy photos of cards in the 70s and 80s. By this point in time, car companies are using a thicker stock with UV glossy coating, and player photography is much more crisp, vivid, and sharp, as evidenced here in this 99 Fleur Update Josh Beckett rookie card. Graphics are more colorful and creative. And now car companies are, are starting to use technology in their cards, as you see here, die cutting technology. On this claim to fame, 96 select Eddie Murray insert card. And Chrome technology. Like on these two cards from 99 Tops, Chrome is Soriano and Jeter. And Refractor technology on this Kevin Mulwa Downers Crusade insert card. And now we're up to the year 2000. And by 2000, as you can see here, cards are fancier and more colorful, and more creative. And in many ways, the cards of the 2000s are more collectible than cards were 10 or 20 years ago. And the baseball cards of the 2000s continue in this showcase. And this is 2001 through 2009. And for those who remember, 2001 was a memorable year in baseball cards because it was the rookie year of Albert Pujols and Ichiro. And I actually have some of their rookie cards here in my collection. Always, always wish I had more. And the case is just filled of other rookie cards, parallels, inserts, serial numbered, a lot of certified autographs here. The player selection is pretty diverse. Uh, there's Hall of Fame caliber guys in here, like the aforementioned Ichiro and Pujols, Justin Verlander, Joey Votto, Clayton Kershaw, Yadier Molina, Zach Greinke, Frank Robinson, and then star caliber players of both past and present, John Lester, John Lackey, Prince Fielder, Alex Gordon, Hunter Pence, Ryan Howard, Carlos Lee, Carlos Delgado. And then I also have some just like minor stars and common type guys. There's uh, autographs in here of Evan Meek, uh, Toby Hall, Jody Garut, Paul Duca, Luke Scott. And then just kind of going through the cards here, one can kind of see and appreciate um, how far cards have come in terms of how visually captivating they can be. Uh, when you consider what we were looking at in, in baseball cards uh, back, you know, in 1987, 88, and 89, and just how far they've come in 20 years. And we're looking at here um, from 2007, 2008, and 2009. The baseball finishes up here, 2013 the present. And on this bottom row here are 2013 tops traded short print photo variation cards. 
Short print photo variation cards have been all the rave in the, in the baseball card hobby the past 10 years. And a short print photo variation card is when a company like Topps uh, takes an alternate photo of a player or sometimes a different player altogether and features it on a card. They short pack or short print that card. And I believe the standard seating odds for short print photo variations are one in every 20 hobby packs. But those can run as long and as high as one in every 1,800 hobby packs. And the alternate photo the company uses is usually has the player in a candid pose. And I'll show you a few examples here. And on this Cal Ripken Jr. card, you see him there interacting with fans and signing autographs on the short print photo variation. Or sometimes in a group setting, like with David Ortiz here, he's interacting with a couple of Yankees players. And Bryce Harper at the All-Star game posing with his All-Star teammates on this short print photo variation. And here's a few examples where it's a different player altogether like with Bo Jackson and Chipper Jones. The standard issue photo on the Bo Jackson is actually KC Royals player Alex Gordon. And the standard issue photo on Chipper Jones is former Braves reliever Craig Kimbrell. But the short print photo variations feature Bo and Chipper. And two uh, uh, short print uh, photo variations exist of Griffey. That's the standard one you're seeing right there. There's also a super short print where it shows Griffey posing with uh, a trophy in his American League All-Star jersey. And that one, I think, is one in every 500 hobby packs. And then up top here are just more cards from 2013, 2014. Uh, stars, minor stars, semi-stars. You see a Clint Frazier autograph. Thank you, Chad, for that one. Paul Goldschmidt autograph. A couple modern stars there. And Jose Abreu, Mike Trout. There's a Chris Sale game jersey autograph card. And then just more of the same back here in these rows. You see Trout again back there. David Ortiz. Uh, Zach Wheeler, Adam Jones. There's an autograph of 2019 home run champ Jorge Soler. Also compliments to Chad. Thank you. Omar Vizquel. A couple more stars here. Shohei Otani and Aaron Judge. The top row here are some manufactured patch autograph cards. These patches actually did not come off the player's jersey, unlike the previous ones I showed you. These were just uh, Upper Deck manufactured patches. So they were made, these, these patches were made by Upper Deck. But the autographs you see on the patches are authentic and came from the players themselves. There's uh, Dan Heron, Cliff Lee, Adam Dunn, Brandon Phillips, and Grady Sizemore. And then I snuck a few other cards in this display that are, aren't baseball cards, just because of its placement and proximity in the collection, and also because I ran out of space in other areas. Uh, here's the one from football. It's uh, running, Jaguars running back Leonard Fournette. Patch card, multicolored. And then down here, at the foot of the display, I have some of my better hockey jumbo patch cards. Uh, here's one, a really nice one of Brian Little. It's probably one of the nicest jumbo patch cards I own. Just all the, the colors and breaks in there. Serial number to 10. Just really, really nice. And that's uh, Florida Panther star Alexander Barkov. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, the Oilers. And Henrik Zetterberg, uh, Red Wings legend. Now on to the football cards. They begin here on this shelf under the baseball patch cards with some rookie cards from the early 80s. There you see Tony Dorsett rookie card, Ronnie Lott, Lawrence Taylor, Marcus Allen, Eric Dickerson. And then they continue through the 80s up to about the mid-90s here in these two rows, where once again it's all about the rookie cards as well as insert cards. And there you see Steve Young, Reggie White, Jim Kelly, Bo Jackson, Troy Aikman, Marshall Falk, Isaac Bruce, Deion Sanders, Chris Carter, Tim Brown, Michael Irvin, Emmett Smith, Curtis Martin, Brett Favre.
So the football cards of the 90s continue in this showcase. This is 95 through 99. And again, it's rookie cards, parallels, inserts, serial numbered, certified autographs. And it's the big time players of the game, as well as minor stars and semi stars. There's actually in this showcase, you'll see there's a lot of Joey Galloway cards. Uh, former wide receiver Joey Galloway, he played for the Seahawks, uh, the Cowboys, the Buccaneers. He was a first round draft pick in 95 out of Ohio State. Back in the late 90s, my cousin Dominic and I designated Galloway as our favorite player and the guy that we wanted to try to collect all the cards of. So you see a lot of him in this showcase and down here in the shelf below. Um, as far as how I acquired the cards you're seeing here and how they found their way into my collection, a lot of different methods and means. Uh, a lot of these cards you're seeing here in the display case were uh, pulled out of packs that I bought 20 years ago at the hobby and retail shops. Maybe some from eBay auctions or trades. As far as private auctions go, uh, there's a guy by the name of Steve who's been running an online private auction for probably over 20 years now. And when he runs his auction, he just sends it to my email address. And maybe I'll bid on some cards if I like them, you know, in his auction or whatever, and, and, and picked up some of the cards that way. Uh, I can remember back in 1998, uh, the two big rookie cards to get back in 98 were Peyton Manning and Ryan Leaf. Of course, Leaf didn't last too long, as we know, and he was quickly supplanted by Randy Moss as the big rookie to get back in 98. Nineties football continues on this shelf and runs through 2003. 2000 was the rookie year of a little player. You may have heard of him by the name of Tom Brady. <laughs> and honestly, if anybody knew, if any of us knew back in 2000 what Brady was going to become, I think we would have stocked up on his rookie cards, which were literally just a few dollars back then. Uh, Brady's rookie cards didn't show up in value until he won his first Super Bowl in 2001. And the funny thing about that is the Topps company didn't even produce any cards of Tom Brady until 2002 two years after he was in the league. In fact, I'll show it to you. It's right here. That's the first Topps card of Tom Brady in 2002. Again, two years after he came into the league. 2000 and 2001, Topps didn't produce any cards of Brady. And 2000 uh, was also the rookie year of Hall of Fame uh, uh, linebacker Brian Urlacher. And 2001, our rookie cards of Drew Brees, LaDainian Tomlinson. That was also Michael Vick's rookie year. 2000, 2003, we see Tony Romo, Jason Witten, Andre Johnson. This showcase is football 2004 through present day. And I have a lot of football cards that I've acquired from my collection the past six months or so that are just sitting in stacks in a little room. And when we get to the room, I'm going to show you some of them. And they're actually just waiting to be displayed out here in the showcases and on the shelves. And as you can kind of see the way I have my cards set up out here in the showcases and shelves, it's as if they're one long continuous chain. And so when I want to add links to the chain, what I do, and I do this every September, I actually take all these cards you're seeing out here, I take them all down, and I'll take a, a slightly damp rag, and I'll wipe them all down because over the course of a year, you know, like a, a thin layer of dust will settle itself on the plastic holders that the cards are placed in. And I'll wipe them all down. And then at that point, what I'll do is I will integrate or interweave, you know, pick whatever term you want, the new cards I've acquired for the collection out here into the showcases and, and, and shelves and redisplay the freshly wiped down cards along with them. And just reassemble them all out here. And believe me when I tell you that it makes a difference wiping them down. Because when, when you wipe that, that layer of dust off of them. And I know the ones like in the showcases you're seeing here don't get dusty. But the ones out on the shelves do because they're exposed. Uh, it makes a big difference. It, it really does. In terms of like how like, like visually stunning again the cards can be. And how they pop when you see them with all the nice colors and such. So uh, again I do that once a year. And put the new stuff out here. Uh, again, back to the cards, starting from the top here, you see 2004. Uh, that was a big rookie year of Roethlisberger, Manning, Rivers, and of course, Larry Fitzgerald. And then again, the cards just run through the years. Um, rookie cards, parallels, inserts, certified autographs um, from guys that like never made it, like Mike Haas. 
to future Hall of Famers that like you're seeing there, Adrian Peterson, Calvin Johnson, and studs like Jamal Charles, Matt Forte. The football cards end down here on this bottom row, the showcase. And then we pick up with some hockey cards here from the early to mid-80s. There's a few Gretzky's and a, a top Steve Eisenman rookie card there. And the hockey cards continue on this shelf below the showcase here. And you see in the top row here are more hockey cards from the 80s. Some rookie cards there. And then the cards go into the 90s here. I just want to focus just for a second here on these older hockey cards from the 80s. For those who collect hockey cards, you know that prior to 1990, hockey cards were all about two brands, Topps and OPG. And I'll show an example here on this Joe Sackick rookie card from 8990. On the left is the Topps brand Sackick rookie card. You see it there with the Topps logo in the upper left corner. On the right, the OPG version. There you see the OPG label. Visually speaking, both cards appear to be identical. Same photo of Sackick, same card layout, graphics, design. But Tops and OPG cards are different in a few different ways. Not so much in the way they look, but in the way they feel. If you actually handle the cards, as I have, obviously, OPG cards feel different because they're produced on a different kind of card stock. The card stock OPG cards are, are produced on is um, it has a different texture. It's smoother. Uh, almost like a flat gloss finish to it, whereas Topps cards just have a typical cardboard feel. I got a couple examples here, because like the old saying goes, a picture's worth a thousand words. Look on the back of these two hockey cards, where the text and, and the stats are. Let me show you. On the left here, you see a Pete Stasny Topps card. On the right is a Tony Esposito Opeachy card. And you just kind of see the difference there. The Opeachy card is crisper. It's 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 like a, again, a different card stock. It almost kind of jumps out at you, whereas the Topps card stock is just flatter and more cardboard finish. So, again, differences being in the stock and the texture, and the also difference uh, being in distribution of the cards. Um, Topps cards were uh, distributed in the United States for American collectors, and OPG cards are distributed in Canada for Canadian collectors. Um, to this day, as those who collect hockey cards know, OPG are valued significantly higher than Tops, And so Canadians, like my buddy Carm up in Canada there, they got to grow up collecting OPG, whereas I had to, you know, growing up here in the United States, had to collect Tops. But that's okay. I'm not complaining. I just I just love to collect hockey cards. And continue on with the hockey cards on this shelf here. You see now we're into the 1990s. And the big names of that era in hockey, uh, Gretzky, Wah, Lemieux, Eiserman, Hall, Yager. Rookie cards, parallels, insert cards, autographs. Right, here's a few rookie cards in Black Diamond. Henrik and Daniel Sedin and Roberto Luongo. There's a rookie card of Vincent LeCavalier. Goalie masks are very cool. I always have been. And there's a couple of cards there that show Martin Brodeur's mask. And like we talked about earlier, you know, come the 1990s, sports cards are changing. They're cooler, sleeker, more colorful, more creative, pretty much more everything. Uh, but they're also more expensive, as those of us who know collect these. You know, pre prior to 1990, hockey cards were 50 cents a pack. Um, and then Upper Deck comes around and introduces the $1 pack to us. And then it culminates in like 05, 06, or was it 04, 05 with Upper Deck's The Cup. $500 for one pack. Of course, you could get a, a Sidney Crosby, Alex Ovechkin patch rookie card that's worth like tens of thousands in one of those packs, sure. But once again, the, the packs are expensive. The packs are becoming more expensive, and just collecting is becoming more expensive. It absolutely is. And then on the top of the shelf here, we got late 90s. And then into the 2000s here.
And there's another cool mass card of Patrick Waugh from Pacific Dynagon. Yeah, the other some few uh, game use cards here. There's a dual Luke Robitaille, Bernie Nichols patch card. Upper deck the cup, Marcus Feligno patch autograph. It's the only cup card I own. And there's a pretty cool quad game use card of Ryan O'Reilly. No fight strap on there. And the hockey cards of the 2000s continue here in this showcase, my fifth and final one. And this showcase holds my hockey cards from 20, from I'm sorry, from 2000 to 2010. And in the 2000s, collecting hockey cards, we see kind of a changeover, a changing of the guard. Uh, your stars of the 80s, like Gretzky, Wall, Lemieux, Eiserman, they're retiring. And now in the 2000s, you're ushering in a new uh, breed of superstars, a new wave of superstars. Guys like Crosby, Ovechkin, Kane, Taves, Stamkos, Nash, Fleury, guys like that. And also in the 2000s, uh, we see the meteoric rise of the Upper Deck Young Gun Rookie Card as the number one rookie card of choice for hockey card collectors. I'll show you an example of a few of them right here. These are from 2005-2006 Upper Deck. That's Deanna Phaneuf, Brent Seabrook, and Duncan Keith, Young Gun's Rookie Cards. And I think a couple things make the Young Guns rookie cards so attractive to collectors. Number one is simplicity. Uh, if you look here, and I'll show you a couple more right down here, at these two Young Guns rookie cards of Wayne Simmons from the Kings at that time and Kyle Turris of the Coyotes, um, you don't see any autographs, multicolor patches on there, serial numbers, bells, just no bells or whistles at all. It's just a basic, clear, crisp photo of a player on a car with a UV glossy coating. And once again, it, it's simple and it's basic. And I think collectors like that. And the second thing is availability. Uh, these Young Guns rookie cards are not seated at long odds. They're just a one to four ratio. So you buy a box of Upper Deck hockey cards and you're gonna pull a handful of Young Guns rookie cards out of that box. And Upper Deck has kept it that way for the past 20 years. You know, so once again, I think collectors appreciate that and, and they have made Young Guns rookie cards certainly their card of choice. Um, also consider the fact that currently Upper Deck is the only trading card company that is allowed to produce uh, hockey cards with NHL logos on them. Uh, Topps has long been out of the, uh, the NHL game. And Panini stopped making hockey cards, I think, back in 2014 was their last year. So it's only Upper Deck right now that can produce guys with their NHL jerseys and logos on. I think in the game still produces hockey cards, but they're not allowed to produce the players featuring their NHL logos. And the hockey cards conclude here on this shelf in front of the showcase, the top two rows. It's 2010 to present. And here's more of those Upper Deck Young Guns cards we're talking about. It's Chris Kreider, Jake Allen, Zemgus Gurgensons, Jonathan Huberto, Seth Jones, Tyler Toffoli, Peter Morazic, Martin Jones, Frederick Anderson. And you see a couple autographs of Sergei Bobrovsky and Nikita Kucherov. And then here are these three cards, the Yarmir Yager Top 100, that's Jamie Benn in the middle, and that Connor McDavid you see there. Uh, those are from Tim Hortons, uh, Upper Deck cards. I think it's impossible to live in Canada and not be familiar with the Tim Horton donut shop chain. It's hugely popular in Canada. And as you guessed, yes, I did get those from Carm, so thank you, Carm. Uh, but yeah, you, I guess you would buy donuts, uh, coffee and a donut, and they would throw in a pack of Upper Deck cards, promotional cards here. Um, you get like four regular base cards and then an insert card in every pack. And Carm sent me a bunch of those from Canada. And I think that's very cool. Uh, just a cool promotional item there. Again, hockey is Canada's national pastime. McDonald's Canada was doing a similar promotion some years ago. 
I got some cards I'll show you right here. Pride of a Nation cards. Um, again, came through uh, McDonald's in Canada, as well as these two cards here, Brother and Stamkos. Some years ago, I bought uh, a lot of hockey cards off a guy in Canada by the name of Mike, and he actually sent me these cards you're seeing here from McDonald's Canada as part of it. There's another one there, that cool-looking Alex Ovechkin skate card was from McDonald's Canada. Uh, Danny Heatley, uh, Joe Thornton, and Mike Madano. And I just, I like things like that. I think that's very cool, to be honest with you. I have a good buddy uh, named Paul who works at McDonald's. And I always bug Paul and say, hey, Paul, you know, Canada, uh, McDonald's in Canada is getting cool cards from Upper Deck. You guys getting any? And he would just tell me, no, nah, it's just the usual boring Happy Meal stuff. But once again, um, I, I like cards like that. I like promotional cards and just different kinds of cards, hockey. So, On the same shelf as the hockey, the bottom two rows of that shelf is where the basketball cards begin. Right here with late 80s Fleer, Kim Olajuwon and Magic Johnson. A couple of Michael Jordan all-star cards from a Fleer subset. Yes, I have a lot of Michael Jordan cards in the basketball collection, I do. John Stockton, Dennis Rodman, Reggie Miller rookie cards. There's a David Robinson a Hoops rookie card. This Mark Jackson card is kind of an interesting little novelty item. It's gotten some recent publicity uh, because I'll show you why. That is the Menendez brothers seated courtside behind Mark Jackson captured in the card. And then we're into the early 90s now. And the, the basketball cards kind of play the same way as other sports. The big names of the era, you know, Jordan, uh, Shaq, Magic, Pippen, Rodman, Drexler, Ewing. We were seeing some rookie cards of Chris Webber and Anthony Hardaway. I'm moving back this way across the, the shelf. Jason Kidd rookie card, Kevin Garnett, more Michael Jordan, you know, mixed in there. Inserts, parallels, subset cards, Grand Hill. Now we're getting to 96, 97 here where you're seeing Kobe rookie cards, Allen Iverson were the big draws uh, back then, of course, the big rookie cards, as we know. Here you're seeing a couple of the Kobe rookie cards from 96, 97 tops. And on the end, here's a couple tops chrome rookie cards of Sharif Abdur Rahim and Ray Allen. And the basketball cards continue on this display. I normally keep this display in a little room. and We're going to go to the room in a second and check some things out in there. But uh, quite honestly, the room's a little bit poorly lit. And so these uh, basketball cards are on a portable display, wooden display stand. So I just brought the display, in, uh, the display stand out here where the lighting's better. And so starting at the top here, late 90s with Tim Duncan, 97, 98, 98 SP, authentic rookie card. Tracy McGrady Chrome. Rookie card. Again, you see a healthy dose of Jordan in there from the late 90s. And more rookie cards. Inserts. Parallel subset cards. There's Dirk Nowitzki and Mike Bibby rookie cards. Dirk again. More Jordan. Vince Carter. Paul Pierce rookie cards there. And now we're into the late 90s, early 2000s. There's a few autographs, Jason Terry, Ron Artest, Tim Thomas, Jamal Crawford, Paul Gazal. And the cards continue at the bottom of the display here with the early to early 2000s. Tops Heritage. There's a Ray Meyer autograph, Jerry Stackhouse. And Jordan features the Washington Wizard, Dwight Howard rookie cards, Yao Ming. A few more autographs there, Carlos Boozer. Antoine Jameson, Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade rookie cards, Luol Deng. Just 
So now I'm standing in a room that I had just mentioned where I keep the final couple displays of basketball cards. It's a room in the corner of my basement, and we're going to take a look at more stuff in this room because there's more to see in here. But for right now, we'll just finish up showing you the basketball, uh, which is right here on this display. And it picks up where the basketball on the previous display I just showed you left off, which is 2007-2008. Uh, uh, it's down here. You Kevin Garnett rookies there. And then it just continues through you know, Russell Westbrook. Insert rookie card there. And a few in this row. So a couple of James Harden rookies. And then just some autographs you see in there. Uh, Mo Williams, George Gervin, John Wall rookie. And then up top where we conclude, Bill Walton autograph, Tobias Harris, Ennis Canners, and Anthony Davis rookie card. And Elvin Hayes. So continuing on with this room that I mentioned in the corner of the basement. Um, there's a lot of stuff in this room, as you can see here. And I'm going to show it all to you. But sticking on the, the topic of sports cards here, the room uh, houses... Uh, pretty much the vast majority of my sports car collection in terms of the commons and cards and binders. Uh, and I'll show them to you over here on these shelves. So you can see here are commons boxes for baseball cards. Um, and again, you know, just thousands upon thousands of them in there. I have them labeled, of course. So like this commons box is, it says baseball 70 through for their 89 score in Donruss. And then they just kind of go chronologically through the years. For those who collect sports cards, you know that when you have, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of cards, as some people do, you know, you got to organize them in some way. So you know what you're looking for. Uh, either that are going to be wasting a lot of time. <laughs> and then here, like, you can see this is just like remnants of past boxes of cards I bought years ago, where I would just cut out the labels off the cardboard box and just affix them to the boxes. So these are all like baseball comments here. Again, running chronologically. Here it says 2001 a present, so my, my most recent baseball comments would be in that box. Then moving over here to football, the same deal, you know, earliest football down here in this comments box, and they just run chronologically through the years, you know. Of which, this one says 2001 a present, but that's obviously erroneous because this one says 2007 a present, but I know in this box right here, that one's got my most recent football in, so... I should go back and fix the label at the top of this one at some point, one would think. A couple more of those cello packs here to show you. This one from 2008. It's Matt Ryan, Upper Deck Potential Limited Subset card showing through there. And actually on that one, I have three. Yeah, there's, there's the same one below it there. And then down here, there's Matt Ryan like on the back of that one, or on the, on the bottom of that one, I should say, where it's covered up by the barcode. So... I mean, Matt Ryan was the top quarterback back in 2008, and he still was the top draw from that draft class even, even today. Um, he's, he's a star. He really is, former MVP, Super Bowl. And down here is uh, Nicholas Backstrom, rookie headliners from 2007-2008, uh, Backstrom's rookie year. That's a hockey one. Um, just to add, some, just to add uh, a little bit of info here about these, for those who collect cards, you know about cello packs like this. For those who aren't, don't collect cards aren't familiar, um, you might be wondering... Again, you know, why why bother keeping in the pack like that? Why not remove that Matt Ryan or that Nick Backstrom from the pack? Go through the other cards that are also offered in that pack and add them to your collection. Uh, good question, but the answer is um, by leaving in its original state here in the sealed cello pack actually makes them more collectible. It does. Um, again, it's, it's considered like a, a, a find. It's considered something maybe kind of rare. And once again, by leaving it inside the cell pack and it's in a quote-unquote original state, it actually makes the card more collectible and more desirable to collectors who like uh, to add like stuff like this to their collections. Here on the top shelf of this display, I keep uh, some of my hand collated complete sets. Um, you see a bunch here. Um, different sports, all, all four of them actually. And these again, these are hand collated sets, meaning that some dealer out there, somebody bought a box or multiple boxes of a certain card product, opened them up, broke them down, and just hand collated a complete set and sold it that way. And you see a lot of these sets here are from the mid-90s because that's when I was going to card shows on the weekends. And on a dealer table, I'd find like a hand collated set 
for like 10, 12 bucks. And it just made sense for me to buy it. Cause then I would know I have every card in that set. And then I don't have to like bother necessarily buying a whole box of cards. I'm breaking it down. It's just, it's all right there for me. Um, and then sometimes as you can see on these, like I would just like, like if the box, if the white box was unlabeled, I would just take a marker and label it myself as you see on these. Or sometimes I get a little more creative and like on this one you're seeing here, the 94 Stadium Club Baseball, I would just clip the labels off the box of cards I bought and just stick them on there. This one here, I'll pull it back. The pinnacle you see up there, there's another pinnacle one there. And then with some more over here. Um, or sometimes I would get, as you can see here, a little bit more other creative. And that was uh, some of you know, dad's computer. Try to like a computer generated label, looks a little bit cleaner. Or here it says 2000 Upper Deck Baseball 2. Again, computer generated. So, again, complete sets there. 